Dr McManus, can I just ask, why is it that Australia still does not officially recognise Lyme disease? Lyme disease is a very complex disease. So when it's transmitted by a tick bite, and a tick is a carrier, so when you get tick bite, you don't just get Lyme disease, you can get other infections. And there are no accurate tests available because of the fact that tick is a carrier, which means it can transmit unknown bugs to you. Is, it the, is, the, is the disease itself in humans contagious? It's not contagious, like it's not, you, if you're in the same room with the person, you don't get it. But if you happen to have blood transfusion, things like that, mm. you can get it. And what is it exactly? Well, it's a little spirochetal bacteria that causes the infection. But the problem with the disease is the symptoms are non-specific, which means it can be anywhere in your body. And usually to define a disease, you need to have a, a like a, if it's to do with the liver, you've got a hepatitis. Yeah. Mm. But with this disease, it's all over. So no specific symptoms, bad testing or really inaccurate testing. Mm. And because the symptoms after tick bite are delayed, delayed diagnosis, Mm, and it's very to, hard to... Harder to treat. Yep. Mm. Amy, you were diagnosed eventually mm. in 2012. Can you just give us an idea of what it's like to live with Lyme disease? It's extremely difficult in this country because, as Moala said, it's not really recognised here and there isn't the proper education. So I was misdiagnosed for many years and I didn't get proper treatment or proper testing. The testing that I did have was unreliable, so I went down a different journey. And I ended up going from being this really health, healthy, vibrant, um, energetic person to being someone who couldn't get out of bed because of debilitating symptoms of extreme fatigue, pain. I had tinnitus, IBS and insomnia. And I ended up not being able to look after my kids and I couldn't work. And it was very, very difficult. This thing changed your life for the yes. worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and you didn't have any voices. You didn't have any people saying, hey, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. So then you lived in this frustration bubble. Yes. I mean, the, the most difficult part of it was that not many people were educated or aware of what this disease was. So they didn't believe I was sick. And it is very much the invisible illness. So a lot of your symptoms are things that you might not see on the outside, but they can really change your life. So it's mm. robbed me of nine years of my life. Mm. I mean, I've done stories on Lyme disease for 60 minutes over the years. And, and you know, people in Australia, they get forced to go overseas, often to places like Germany, to receive treatment. Because we're still not seeing um, the AMA recognise Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. or our government recognise Lyme disease. And it's also very difficult now, isn't it, to find a doctor who will treat you here because doctors who, who accept Lyme disease is, is something real. Um, th there's now a crackdown. Well, the doctors who treat it are uh, somehow their registration becomes compromised over little things because the disease, Lyme disease, a lot of times people go on the internet and they put their symptoms and the result comes out. Dr Google says you've got Lyme disease. Then they go to their doctor and go, I've got Lyme disease, treat me. And then the doctor goes, because in the past, in the 1990s, there was research in Australia in Australian ticks and they couldn't find the Lyme bacteria in Australian ticks and therefore there was this big you know, propaganda saying there's no Lyme disease in Australia. So if you get a patient coming in saying, I've got Lyme disease, and the doctor has been trained to say no, it isn't. So obviously there are doctors, and you found one too, um, yes. that could treat you. What was the treatment and what effect did it have? What impact did it have on you? So I did... Once they knew what it was. Yeah, yeah. Look, I did do antibiotics for a while, but the issue, and, and you know, we've spoken about this today, is that if you don't get early intervention and treatment, it can be very difficult to recover. So I did go on antibiotics and they helped me to some degree. Um, I studied nutrition, so I really had to become my own self-healer. Mm. And I did a lot of different therapies here in Australia, but I just wasn't getting better. My health was still failing. So I ended up last year going overseas for treatment and it was pretty gruelling, um, but it is less expensive than where, here in Australia. Where did you go to get that? So I went over to Cyprus yeah. and I did a five week sort of detox immune boosting protocol. And that was really focused on getting your body into a state where it can fight the infection itself. Mm -hmm. And I am really happy to report that I am starting to feel better now. I'm back doing part-time work and I can take care of my kids. But it has been a nine-year journey that I think wouldn't have been there if I had have had the education and I knew what to do from the beginning. Dr McManus, you think we'll reach a point where um, what um, Amy went through over in Cyprus, the kind of treatment plan, will be available for patients here in Australia? In time it will be because at the moment governments uh, have renamed the disease DISCAT mm -hmm. and there is tenders out for one, educating the public and the professionals about 
how to remove the ticks for the public, what to do if you get a tick bite, for the doctors to understand the disease and to treat the patient better. And then there's also uh, there's a pathway that's been set up. It's called a multidisciplinary pathway. That's been set up by, because there's a tender out by the health department. And that pathway will allow people to come in and an unknown doctor who doesn't know about it can contact experts mm -hmm. and be guided through and, treating and, and the patient. And it'd be okay for them to say something. I mean, this is a country where ticks are prevalent in, in everyday mm. life, everywhere. Mm. We mm. grew up with ticks. I had ticks all the time mm. when I was a kid and we, mm. we would remove them and the outskirts of Brizzy. Mm. And they're in the country, they're, they're in the cities, they're, they're in built-up areas, and yet we don't have this more streamlined way of diagnosis and treatment. We don't because in the past, Australians thought there was nothing in ticks, they just used to remove it, mm. throw it away. Yeah. Mm. But now it's become more and more prominent that our ticks got uh, bugs mm. in them that we need to be serious about. Mm. Yeah. And we're hearing too many cases like Amy's mm. for, for the issue to mm. be ignored. Mm. Thank you both yes. of you for joining us this morning, we really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so and glad much. you're feeling better, Amy. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Really thank good you information so for people out there, thank, thank you. you. And for more information uh, on Dr McManus's foundation, head to carlmcmanus.org.au. We reached out to the Minister for Health's office for comment and they provided us with this statement on behalf of Greg Hunt. Diagnosis of Lyme disease is a matter for individual doctors. However, the Australian Government has taken three overarching strong strategic steps to improve treatment for patients and address the underlying causes of illness attributed to Lyme disease and Lyme-like diseases. The steps in particular aim to provide better patient care for people in need. You can read the full statement on our website. At least they're acknowledging it's a step in the right direction, isn't it?